In this quick video, we're going to talk about recovering tapes that were recorded by a maladjusted camera, alignment-wise, but we're not going to use a scope. We're going to just do this, eyeball this, and show you guys how to do it. It's not that difficult, but it is time-consuming. Let's uh, check it out. When are two adapter cables that look identical not identical? These two look the same, right? You would think they're the same, but they're not. They're both stereo, but as you'll notice with one, I'm going to use this as an AV cord, plug it into the camera, plug the red one in, this, this pass-through cable, I'm going to have to clean this up, got a picture from the red, I'm doing this in one shot, no editing, just so you guys can see, there's the picture from the camera, come back over here, second adapter cable this one unplug and plug this one in and you'll see that it is not the red but it's actually the white two adapter cables and the polarity is reversed now this video is not so much about the discrepancy between the two plugs, the, the two patch cords. I just wanted to make people aware that that's what's out there. Um, this is a mono camera. Um, some of them use a stereo plug and then we get into a whole new ball of wax because you see these ones here, there are multiple different configurations. This one here works with the Samsung TV as the AV input, but it won't work with this for an AV output at all. None of them are compatible. And then there's Sony, which have got their own cable which is wired different than this one. This is the mono camera. It just uses a standard three conductor stereo type 3.5 millimeter. This one here is a double ring. So this one's a tip ring ring ground. This one's a tip ring ground, right? Um, some devices use this as AV, but it's, it's not universal. And in this case, a couple of them are reversed. Uh, I think the ground on this one is down here and on this one here the ground expects it to be up here closer to the front anyway it's all dependent on the device itself this is the correct cable for this this video is more on recovering video from a camera and this I have received some tapes I'm just working on right now I'm actually using another camera right now for this I, in this particular order I had I had to use two different cameras because one would play some tapes and wouldn't play the other and it was just a mess I think probably what happened when the recording was made was, um, see this camera here is all a lot of plastic in it and some of them are metal, but this was a lot of plastic. This is a sharp view cam and it, I mean these sharp, these sharp cameras were junk. Anybody that says these were good is on drugs. These were junk. In the camera world, if it wasn't made by Sony, it wasn't very good. That was my opinion of cameras, okay? If it was either a Sony or it was something else, and the something else were just, just absolute crap, as you saw from those two Sanyo cameras that I just had the last week. But there's not a camera repair video. This is a video recovery video. I'm going to attempt to get this tape to play. I've already transferred this tape. I actually transferred it in another camera that I've got in the house. But I'm going to attempt to get this tape to play on this camera here. So I've removed the cover from it. Actually, the cover was already removed because when it was given to me, the person that owned it took it apart to take a tape out and they wrecked it. They wrecked the microphone. There's a cable that the microphone actually sits on the camera on these. So I figured I'd hang on to this as a playback machine because it's a Hi8 player. Um, because they ripped the top off of it, though, the only way to open this up is I actually have to trigger a little switch down here. Now I think what happened on these tapes and what happens on a lot of them, I'll try and get a shot down here to show you because sometimes cameras, Canon were famous for this, had a tendency of a guide falling out. If, a guy, if this one of these guides falls out, the tape is going to be recorded at the incorrect angle and there's really no way to recover it if the guide falls out. It's, if that happens, it's a lost cause. But a lot of times what happens is the guides get loose. The lock keys that hold the guides in place get loose and the guides start to move on their own and misalign the the recording. Now, most people don't even know this 
because they can play their recording back in the camera and it will look fine. It's only apparent when the camera does finally pack it in and they buy a new camera and find that their last half a dozen tapes that they recorded won't play on the new camera. And then they panic because the only way to get them to play back is to intentionally misalign a camera to play back the tape that is out of spec. A lot of times, or I shouldn't say a lot, but many times though, what happens is if we look down here in the V stoppers, now at the end here, pointed out way down inside here. Some cameras have a, a, a cast aluminum V block. This one's plastic, so plastic has a tendency to break. But some of them have a little aluminum V block. And when the other camera is done, I'll, if I'm still making this video, I will grab it and show you the inside of it. But what happened a lot of times is, you know, people go on vacation, they take their cameras to the beach and whatever, and, you know, a little bit of sand gets in the camera because, you know, no one's careful with their video equipment when they're on a beach. They just set them down on the sand, and the number of cameras that I had to deal with sand with over my career, I tell you, I could write a book. I had so many, and everybody was mad. Everybody was mad at me because of what I had to charge them to clean it out. I'm not the one that took their stupid camera to Hawaii or to a beach somewhere. You know, but I'm the bad guy because I'm the one charging them 150 bucks to clean it. And they're like, 150 bucks to clean it? That was 20 years ago, by the way. Um, what would happen is a little pebble or something would get stuck in the V-block. And then when the guide went into place, well, you can imagine what happens if there's something inside there that's holding the guide back. The guide doesn't go all the way into place. The guide ends up being down a little bit. I don't know if I can pull this one down without breaking it, but it ends up, the guide ends up stuck like that, right? Because something has got in there and it's jammed the guide. The little, this little alignment piece here. Oh, look, there's some shit on there already. That's just a little piece of plastic, but this little stopper here that has to fit into that slot you can see there's a little point on the end of it, and that little point goes right into, I don't know if we can see it on here, it's, it's down in the base here. Anyway, it goes right down into, there's a little hole that it fits into right down in the end here. And that's what holds the guide at the exact position that it needs to be. And if something gets in that hole, the guide can't go all the way down. So then they end up with a tape that is out of spec. and Sometimes we can get a recovery. Other times we can get a partial recovery. The tapes I'm working on right now, I'm doing pretty good on the tapes. Uh, there's There was one that I probably got 90% of it. because And the problem with that is when there's something inside here, of course, every time you hit the pause button and the tape backs up a bit, this has a tendency to move because it's not locked into place. So it shifts slightly and that causes the alignment to shift. And that's the issue I was having with these tapes that I've been working on for the past week and hopefully we'll have them finished today. But here's the procedure. Load the tape into the camera. I like this one because it's an open chassis. Other cameras, you got things hanging apart on them to try to work on them. And of course, I can use my EVS 7000 as well. I don't like to use that. I really don't. Uh, as good as the EVS 7000 is, it's a machine that I use specifically for tapes that have, for high 8 tapes that have PCM audio. I don't see them that often, but I do see them. And because it's the only machine I've got that does Hi8 that has PCM, I kind of reserve that machine for those tapes. And uh, the other the other machines I've got, the other cameras I've got, I use for the regular tapes. And if I need to do Hi-Fi, if it's a Hi-Fi stereo tape, for example, I might use the EVS 7000 because it'll play back Hi-Fi stereo. But if the sound is not that important, then I might just play them back on a Monaro camera. Uh, because again, I'm, I'm doing this for recovery, right? Tape recovery. Um, and I do use my EVS 7000 when I'm not dealing with, um, when I'm not dealing with misaligned tapes. I just don't like to, I don't like to have to screw around with the alignment on that because every time you turn the guides, you're loosening things up and eventually they're going to get to the point where they're not going to work. They're going to get loose and then you've got a machine that's shot. So I say I try not to use my EVS 7000 for tape recovery work for that reason, just because I want to keep it pristine as long as I can. So I usually use one of these old cameras. Put this thing into play and uh, we'll see that the, uh, the picture is pretty bad. 
it's jumping all over the place and it's not tracking. So I'm going to adjust the guides and see if I can get this to track. I'm going to do it by I have my adjustment tool and this is a special tool that I've got here. It's got the some of the guys would take a slot screwdriver and just take a, a put it in a vise and take a hacksaw and cut a slot in it. That was another way of doing it. This one here is actually a, a proper adjustment tool. And then I'm going to adjust the guides and I'm looking at this on another monitor. So I'll show you what I'm doing on the plasma here while I'm doing this. But I'm going to adjust the two guides here one at a time to try to get the picture to, uh, to play properly. So I'll show you the screen that I'm working on. So I'm going, to enter, I'm going to adjust the, I don't know which guide is out. I'm going to try, the, the first I'll try the entrance side guide, which is going to affect the top portion of the picture and see if I can get that to clear up. Okay, I've got that portion clearing up pretty good. And I'll try the other guide. See if we can get this to come in. Okay, we're getting there. And then I'll just do the other guide again. Now one of the things I've got is I've got plasma interference from the plasma set in here. Normally I wouldn't be doing this with, on, the, on a plasma like this. But there, I think I've got this pretty close. This is pretty close to where it needs to go. Do I have sound? I have sound. Those lines that you see there are just from the plasma interfering. If I move my hand away from it, right, I've got my hand near the camera. I'm, in, I'm inducing interference from the plasma, so if I move my hand away from the head amp, it goes away. So this tape, this one here is almost perfect, and when I did the transfer, I've already done the transfer of this tape, but when I did the transfer, I had this looking really good. Just a matter, it's just a matter of careful adjustment. Oops, I uh, started something rewinding here. I'm trying to edit this around too so that uh, because this is someone's tape, I'm going to, if there's people showing on here, I'm going to cut them out. So if I abruptly stop talking and it cuts away, it's because I had to uh, stop the tape. I don't want to show any anybody on here because this is a client's tape. So I'm just kind of going to just use this for demonstration purposes, but uh, I'm only going to show the scenery like now. Anyway, I think I got it playing pretty good. That's kind of how we adjust the uh, camcorders to play tapes that are out of spec. This can sometimes be a very time consuming process as you can imagine. It would be wonderful if you could just set it once and let the tape play, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you get lucky and you can set it and get a full recovery off the tape because the camera didn't shift. In the case of this particular client with his tapes, um, one of them shifted constantly. I had to keep stopping and going back and resetting it again and then picking up the recording again and in some cases it was so bad there were a few segments that the sound was just cutting in and out. There was just nothing I could do. There was there were, were some tape damage as well because when the guides sometimes get out of alignment to the point where they start to allow the tape to get chewed on the bottom or top edge and then getting the alignment is, is uh, virtually impossible. Um, anyway, that's uh, pretty much that for this one. I just do a little quick video on that. We'll just eject the tape now. And uh, oh, I guess now that I've done this, <laughs> I can. I've already. Re I've already transferred this tape. So I guess at this point I can now take the camera and I can restore it back to the original uh, condition. So that at least when I start. I will be starting with a clean slate. That's what I always try to do when I'm when I'm finished doing a recovery. I take a tape that I recorded on my equipment that was correct at the time I made the recording. Hopefully, hopefully it's correct. Um, it was correct, and I bring them back to spec just so that I can. Uh, I know where to start when I'm going to get this back to spec here. There. And this machine's back to factory spec. Or close enough to factory spec.
at least I'm in the ballpark so the next time I have a tape to work on I can uh, get it correct without uh, too much of an issue. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.